couple of minutes to uh, scoop together the last of our speakers this morning. I've got some giveaways for the kids, so if you're a, if you're a young kid, let's say if you're under 10, uh, let's make it under 18. That sounds more kid friendly to me. Come up and grab one of these show bags. So who's going to be first? Who's going to be the first kid to grab a show bag from me? There we go. Nice orderly queue right there. And I'll hand you out a, a bag. I've only got one hand, so hang on, I might be able to do this two at a time. This could be dangerous. No, here we go. There's two there, so can you separate those for me, now? There we go. Good job. All right, I hope you've got a lot of show bags. We've got a lot of kids. <laughs> there we go. All done. Yeah, this is what it's all about right here, folks. These little munchkins here are the future. It's what we're fighting for today. It's what we have to make people realise that these kids right here that are taking their show bags, they are the future of Australia's fishing. Don't worry, we'll all be dead in 30, 40 years. These kids, it's up to them. So it's good that they're here to see what we have to do to push our point forward. There we go. You can have two weeks, absolutely. There you go, darling. There you go. Well done. That one just called me dad. Oh, you, you are mine. This one as well. <laughs> that one. If, one, if another one calls me dad, I'm in trouble. There's two gone so far. There you go, darling. Thank you. Oh, my God, they're two around everywhere. There you go. You, you, you're almost 18, that bloke. Here we go. The, you can have two. As long as you... Who's the other one going to? Oh, you're a good girl getting one for your brother. Well done. Well, look at this. Giving them away willy-nilly. There's still more kids coming. Here you go. Give them another one that you can give. Give that to that person right there. That's what you need to do. Share. Share. You want another one? Your sister as well? Absolutely. There we go. Well, look at that. That was a lot of kids. It's good to see. We need a lot more kids to be fishing. We need to drag them away from the Playstations and the Xboxes and the computers and, and get them out on a freezing cold Victorian morning like this where it's likely to rain on them. Too many kids these days see the rain and they run inside and get on the computer and get on Facebook and all that sort of stuff. It's not fair. Kick them outside and get them wet. They'll get dry, I'm sure. You've got a towel. Get them out in the environment and let them see what happens. You know, catch them a fish. Let them gut it. Let them cut it up and cook it. Doesn't matter if it's a, you know, a horrible rock cod or something. I'm sure you'll eat it and I'm sure you'll love it. Because they caught it for you, they gutted it and they cooked it. That's important to get your kids outside. It's important to teach them that fishing is still a solid part of, of, of Australian life. It's what we do. It's who we are. We're an island nation. We don't... You know, we don't share our shores with anyone else, so what we do here is what we have. It's all we have. And the government, who surprisingly enough, works for us many, many times you hear, oh, you know, I'm working for the government. That's not the case. They work for us, and we have to tell them what to do. That's what it's about. And that's why we're here today. I've... I've, uh, I'm standing on some show bags, please excuse that. Um, this is a beautiful stage, as you can see. Uh, it was a last minute call, but I think it's very appropriate to be standing in a boat and uh, speaking to all you beautiful people. Um, I'd just like to welcome you all here, firstly and foremostly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, esteemed guests, and the media. And we do have some media here today, and, and it's good to see. This is, as I've just mentioned, and as you've just seen, it's a family thing. It's a family day. Fishing is a family sport. We need to always remember that. It's not just about the dad going to the tackle store and buying the worms for his you know, weekend away with the blokes. It's taking your family with you. It's important that you do that. But what we need as Australian anglers is we need recognition to be anglers, to be able to voice our opinion as anglers. That's what is really going to count in the future. But what you do here today, all of you people have signed up. I can see you now. And I know who you are. And you're putting your signature on the piece of paper that says, I vote for Australian fishing. And that's what you need to do. And that's what you young kids need to do. When you see trouble on the horizon in the fishing area, come out and stand in the rain with us. 
and put your fists in the air and say, I want a better go. I want a better shot at the title. Because I want to be able to fish out there. I don't want to be told that I need to drive 200 kilometres down the coast when the fishing is right on my back door. So what we love about this country is the freedom to do the things that we love. Yes, there are always going to be rules and laws. And some of those rules and laws are there for a reason. And marine parks, I'm not totally against them. I've seen them work in other countries all over the world. I've seen beautiful marine parks growing countless millions of tonnes of fish for recreational fishers to catch, in New Zealand especially. But they just need to be put in the right place. They need to be in the right areas so that anglers find them relatively difficult to get to because otherwise it really is going to encroach on our time, our, our delicate and valuable time that we have to share with our families. So recognition is a big thing and there's five million of us in here in Australia and you people are beautiful and I love you all because you are here to show and, and voice your own opinion and you're doing it with your legs and you're doing it with your faces looking at me now. We need real consultation, we need real scientific data to prove why we need marine parks and why anglers should be locked out of them. Currently, zero, nothing. Nothing I know has ever come out of any scientific data that the current Gillard government has been able to produce that tells me that I shouldn't fish there. So let's see some of that in the future and then we'll talk about marine parks. And you can keep clapping going because we want a fair go. That's all we want. We don't want a, you know, I don't want a, a gold ring or a, you know, a free pass to the movies or a, you know, a, a, you know, a new TV. I don't want any of that. I just want a fair go to go and catch a fish. It's simple. It's one of the most basic things that we can do. And they want to take it away from us, just like that. A, a signature on a piece of paper, done, gone. Goodbye, anglers. No, I'm not going to have it. I didn't spend the last 27 years of my life in the fishing industry to have some moron in Canberra tell me that I can't fish. Yes. Okay, so we've got some fantastic guests. <clears throat> Before I lose my throat, I was yelling at the kids yesterday, so I'm a bit hoarse. <laughs> Not really. Uh, a couple of the first couple of guest speakers we've got don't really need. Uh, well, I suppose one of them might need a little bit of an announcement because he's, uh, he's a little bit uh, hard of hearing these days. Mr. Rex Hunt's going to be first uh, cab off the wreck, followed by probably everybody's favourite fishing presenter, Lee Rayner. We also have Greg Hunt, the Shadow Minister for the Environment. We have Senator Richard Colbeck, uh, spokesman, the Coalition Spokesman for Fisheries, and this guy, he's your man, because I've seen him catch a brim. It was over a kilo on a lure, and that's not easy to do. Yet, yeah, well, there he is. He's an angler. He's your man. Eyeball him out and talk to him. Sarah Henderson, probably uh, the driving force behind all of this that you see here today, uh, along with her uh, many minions, which I'm sure have been running around feverishly trying to organise this. Thank you very much for your time and your space and your beautiful part of the world. We love you. We, uh, surprisingly enough, we've uh, also invited uh, Senator Christine Milne from the uh, Leader of the Greens and uh, no show on that one. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'd also like to uh, just throw a couple of apologies out there and uh, because you, you must have already got my memo because there's no pitchforks or burning torches. Obviously, uh, Tony Burke's not going to roll up. Uh, and uh, Darren Cheeseman, the PM for uh, Karangamite, he's not here either. So uh, <clears throat> there you go. So if you've sharpened up your pitchfork especially, um, you know, probably best to chuck it back on the hay. Without further ado, I would like to uh, please get Mr. Uh, Rex Hunt. He's going to hit me over the head for that, but uh, never mind. We'll get him up the stairs here and get him on the boat and, and let him do what he does best, which is talk to, talk to anglers. He's been doing it for um, more years than I care to remember, mate. Wonderful bit of emotion, Adam, and uh, I'm so glad to be here. 
took me a while to get up there. I'm starting to show the signs of league football and just wear and tear. But I feel really warm and I want to share this with you because it's been so good coming, some of you, such a long way. And uh, I can rant and rave and carry on with the best of them. But I know what works and it's people power. And I know what politicians listen to and that's people and families. But to see the enthusiasm of the next generation coming through is absolutely magnificent. But just let me remind you, uh, just looking through some of these faces, I saw a lot of you in the mid-1990s when 10,000 of us marched on the steps of Parliament House and Jeff Kennett looked through the window and said, goodness gracious me, what's going on there? And 87 scallop boats were history in Port Phillip Bay. We now have a multi-million dollar tourism-related fishery in Port Phillip Bay where people come from all over the world to see the great phenomenon of spawning fish coming into the bay. We also have angler-related bag limits and size limits. These weren't done by the fisheries in a knee-jerk reaction. These were done by organisations like Future Fish and Burr Fish and the angling clubs going to the fisheries saying, we, the anglers, are catching too many fish, it's not good for the fishery and it's not good for our image. So then all of a sudden, after some absolute imbecile started to kiss fish in the early 1990s, people start to release fish. They tag fish and they take kids fishing. Seeing these kids here today warms the cockles of old, this old grandfather's heart because, you know, young man, I like kids. You know why? I used to go to school with them. And I think they're absolutely fantastic. I see my own two beautiful granddaughters now. My goodness gracious me, do they love fishing, do they love getting out, and they sit down and they have their whiting and their flathead, but it's absolutely magnificent. And this is the type of politicians we want to get the message across to. Now Adam said something about people making decisions for us. And the best that I can come up is rules made by people who hate fishing and only supported by those that can't fish. And if you have a look at that, that's the way. Similar things with the marine parks. Now, I have a marine park in front of my place on the eastern seaboard of Port Phillip Bay. It's called the Ricketts Point Marine Park. And I will concede some of the most exotic species, some species that have never been seen, particularly after rain, appear on this marine park. Natural species like spent condoms, dead dogs, dog droppings, possum droppings, and even... I think there was a, a small part of a bloke's hand went down there when 80 mil fell over the top of my joint during the football. But on a serious note, the Marine Park made a few people feel really, really good because they thought they were doing something. However, had they got their snorkel and their goggles and gone in underneath the surface of the water, they would have seen that the Ricketts Point Reef is slowly being eaten by Sabella, a fanworm, by Undaria, an introduced kelp from the Northern Hemisphere, and by the beautiful, beautiful orange starfish. Oh yes, we bring the children down here to have a look at the orange starfish that are eating the reef. The Northern Sea Star ate the Mediterranean. It was deposited in the Dontacostro Channel in, South, in, uh, in Northern Tasmania, where the Senator comes from. And now... Hello? And now, they're brought it into Port Phillip Bay in the ballast of ships, and it's eating Port Phillip Bay. But let's make it a marine park, because it feels good. John Kennedy is a famous orator, a famous coach of our Australian football. He said at half-time during the 1971 Grand Final, when Hawthorne were in all sorts of trouble against St Kilda, don't think, don't hope, do something. And my message here today to you people is this, that if you people have turned up here today, thousands have thought about it, and tens of thousands will know about it. This is a show of strength on most of your day off. Most of you have travelled a long, long way, having to get coffee and supplies for the kids. Some of you have come from interstate. That is what I call passion. Now, the fact of the matter is my daughter taught me one very, very good thing when I was going through a couple of bad, uh, bad spots in my life, and my own fault. She said, Dad, what people think of you is none of your business. But my time has come. 
My time is just starting to sort of wane. But the new beat of people, we need to come through and represent us. We need to go to the government and saying, just because you're a senior at 60 years of age, why does that mean that I don't pay a licence? That is ridiculous. I would like to see some sort of benefit given to licence holders who have to spend that money on food. Not a bloke like me who actually has worked pretty hard, given half of what I earn to the Gillard government and I give it to the people who are still breaking wind under the doona at 3 o'clock this afternoon. But that's the way Australia works. But the way Australia works is that fishing is a family-related activity that does no harm to the environment and causes goodwill amongst people. You don't... Thank you very much. Stop clapping, I haven't got enough fish to throw to the lot of you. Now, you don't see people walking onto the Werribee River like Bill Classen, catching the Mulloway, carrying firearms and writing graffiti on the side of the pier. You see a kid on a pier, he's there for the right reason. He's not painting graffiti on the side of a, a train. Before I finish, let me tell you, I've never been so passionate about life because I look out my window over the bay in October when Collingwood have lost the grand final by a point. It's a great day. And Eddie's gone purple. And I look across the horizon and I see 2,000 boats in my vision. I go to Western Port and I see the people down on the ramp selling coffee and sandwiches. The same people who said to me, how can you get rid of netting in Western Port? Well, I didn't get rid of netting. You people did. Because it's the power of people. And in the history of this great nation, there's only one thing that has ever worked. It's worked in two wars. It's worked for the hundreds of years that we've been here. It's the power of people getting together. And for once in my life, I can walk amongst people now and say, it's not future fish. It's not fur fish. It's not the Torquay Angling Club. It's not we fish. It's not I fish. It's not F fish. It's not fur fish. It's us. And we are the anglers. We are the world. And I can tell you now, if we stick together, there's nothing that gives us more power and energy and people won't take any more notice than a group of people who stand together and say enough's enough. When I say enough's enough in finishing up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I just reiterate what Adam Reuter has said. And he, together with Lee Rayner and the young people here today, they're the future. They are going to be the voice, because I'm getting tired. I've got to go and broadcast football this afternoon because I've just got to try and belt out an existence. Because she's taken all my money and given it to those people that don't work, and they're not here today. But I am. And I love fishing. And I love kids. And fishing is a part of this great nation. Let's stick together and say we demand a fair go. Thank you very much. What do you say? I don't know. on about something. <laughs> ah, well done. Just falling over, that'll cost you eight mil. Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> Uh, Lee Rayner, if you wouldn't mind uh, coming aboard the wonderful Gancraft ship. Now, this is a man who has spent just as much time making his life a part of the fishing industry as I have. And uh, I think together, um, you know, it really has been a, a massive part of who we are. And if we were to lose that, well, we wouldn't be... We've been the dole too, Max. I, I had nothing else to do. I don't know how to do anything else. So if anyone's got any gardening, you know. But we're going to go let that happen. Uh, Here we go. It's all yours, mate. Take it away. Ads are scaring me. If we lose fishing, I'm seriously screwed because that's all I know. I might not be good at it, but it's all I know. And let me tell you, you don't want me doing your garden or mowing your lawns. Rex and Adam have brought up some very, very good points. Fishing is a family thing. It's what we do in Australia. We have the greatest country in the world. We have a free country, and that's why we're here. We've got fishing that people could only dream of. And while for a lot of us, there's a million places we'll still be able to go fishing if they bring in some of these rid ridiculous marine parks, it's the average mum and dad 
that are going to suffer. Because not everyone knows all these rules. And I've seen it. I've seen marine parks in New South Wales, which I can clearly, because I know about it, go, oh, there's a marine park, I'll stay out of that. And in Christmas holidays, mum and dad have gone out in the hire boat with their two young kids, gone into the marine park and copped themselves a couple of hundred dollar fine. Because they didn't even know what a marine park was. They didn't know it was there. And I couldn't tell you why it's there myself. Absolutely ridiculous. A lot of these are that way. Sure, we need some marine parks. I don't ever deny we don't need to look after our fishery. We're just asking for some consultation amongst all of us as anglers. We're the ones who use the waterways. We're the ones who tend to do the most looking after of the waterways. We're the ones who want to continue this for the rest of our lives. I want my girls to be able to walk down here and go fishing if they want or go for a swim and not get in trouble. The other problem we find, guys, is no scientific research in a lot of these marine parks. And the other thing we find that when they lock up our areas, they just go to anglers, find out our best spots, lock them up, and then allow other things like commercial fishing to be done right around the borders of the marine parks, which has a huge detriment on those confined areas. We're here today to show our strength, and I think we're at a very exciting time, and as much as we don't want to be doing this on a Sunday, it is an exciting time, guys. We've had some big battles in the last four years, and we've shown that as anglers, and as general public, what we can do. Last year, we created the impossible. We stopped the super trawler. This is as big, if not a bigger issue, and this is not going to go away. It's not just us, it's every state. Once they get these things happening, guys, it's a snowball effect. And just by people turning up today and showing what you do, you don't have to say anything, but just by being here, we've shown that we are not to be messed with. This is going to continue for the rest of our lives. There will be battles that come and go year to year. Dale and I were just speaking before, and he said, we can deal with one of these a year. As long as we don't get more than one a year, we're, we're sort of okay. We've had four in four years. I thought it was two, but Dale was quick to point out that it wasn't. Some of the battles weren't quite as big. Some of the ones like this are huge, and I don't think a lot of people realise the scale of what we're battling here. So we just need everyone to come together. Forget if you don't like that party or that person. Just stand united and we'll win. Thank you. Great words. Really, really good words. Uh, I was after uh, Greg Hunt if he's available. Is he uh, in the crowd as yet? I believe he is. Yes, he is. Here he is. Good stuff. Thank you, mate. I'll just uh, give you a hand aboard here. Are no, you good? Wonderful. Mate, uh, the crowd and the microphone is all yours. Okay, thanks very much to Adam, to Lee, to Rex. Uh, now, uh, Rex has just told me he's had the DNA done. I am a hunt, he's a hunt, and uh, I had thought he was uncle when he tells me he's dad. So, uh, I'm not sure what to make of that, but anyway, it's the Rex to Rex. Uh, look, I'll be very brief, and uh, I've got a, a really simple point. Fishing is, as you all know, it's a family sport. My brother uh, has a little sports fishing business himself. Uh, he, uh, he runs it out of Melbourne. Uh, it's, it keeps our family going to a certain extent, so it's a, it's a small operation, but that's what our family does. To you, yourselves, I've got two simple messages. There's a right place to protect things, to make sure that, the, that we get the proper breeding. But the wrong thing to do is draw big lines on maps which have no connection to science, which haven't been consulted. Uh, and our approach is very simple. Uh, we are going to move in the next two weeks of Parliament to knock out these big boundaries that have put, been put around the country. Uh, we will do our best to win that. And if we don't win that, if we do get into government, uh, we're going to have to move all of the uh, marine parks that have been put down recently and we'll do it based on two things. Consultation, actually sitting down with the people who take care of the environment, which is yourself. It's the folks that go out on the water that care what they do, that are actually taking care of the environment while talking about it, and we'll do it based on science. And it's very simple. We It's not rocket science, it's just plain science. What are the numbers? What do we need to do? And talk to the people who know. If you have to be talked to, uh, locked out, and right around the country there are people like yourself. So you don't need long speeches, you don't need big words, 
uh, will move in the next two weeks uh, to try to disallow these uh, big boundaries that have been put down. Um, we're not against marine parks in the right place, but what we've got are massive boxes that have been drawn on maps to keep as many people out for as long as possible uh, to appease certain groups in uh, certain part of, parts of the inner city. So that's it from us. We'll take practical action in the next uh, two weeks. And uh, if we get into government, uh, we'll take uh, more practical action to review them all, to meet with you guys, and to do it based on science. Thanks very much. Thank you, Greg Huff. Sorry? Take your question. My, my question is based uh, around the science part. And uh, is it going to be the same sort of science that you to just the Port Phillip uh, Bay area, for instance, there's huge growth all around the perimeter of Port Phillip Bay. Um, Geelong, for instance, is going to move from 225,000 people to 500,000 people in the next uh, 10 or 15 years, which is going to, even if it's just 1% of those people extra that decide to go fishing, that's an enormous extra pressure on that bay's resource and extraordinarily, and extraordinarily, extraordinarily, the bay is not growing at 2% per annum. So that just means that there's going to be less fish for everyone else in the future. The same, the, the, the same flathead, for instance, the same flathead, for instance, is, is declined by 97%. It's not so much of a question as it was, just a general forecast. I look, let me give you a, a, a very simple response. I grew up on the bay. I've lived around the bay for most of my life. Uh, the bay now is healthier than it was 10 and 20 and 30 years ago. It's in pretty good shape. So these are the people, these are the people that campaign to get the bay right. And you need to look around and say, these aren't the enemies of the environment. These are the ones that said we need to take practical steps. They've taken practical steps. I think they deserve respect. And I tell you what, guys, you've got my respect. Thank you. Thank you. We've got Shadow Minister for the Environment. And if I could have now, please, uh, Senator Richard Colbeck, Coalition Spokesman on Fisheries. Now, here is a, a man who not only has to uh, hang out in the big house, but also loves to catch a fish. Uh, a man truly after all of our own hearts. Uh, he's, he, this, is the, this is the bloke you want to be looking for. This, this is the guy who's going to need your vote. Thanks very much and thanks for coming out today. The weather does what the weather does, doesn't it? Um, as Greg said, next week we'll be moving in the House of Representatives a disallowance motion on the management plans for the marine, uh, marine protected areas that have been proclaimed around the country. And what we need now is your help and your voice. It is now really important. If we are going to be able to sensibly modify the proposals that have been put forward by Tony Burke, we need your assistance. We need you to tell every member of parliament in the federal parliament, every single one of them needs to get the message that they should support the disallowance motion. Your local member here, the independents, very importantly, need to understand that your, the weight of numbers is with the recreational fishing community. You need to let them know. Use the platforms that, that have been put in place by your fishing representatives, by the groups that are supporting you in this quest, and that will make it so much easier for, do, for us to do what Greg's just talked about. To put in place sensible marine parks that are based on science and that are based on genuine consultation. Not based on division and putting people into silos and playing them off against each other, which is what's occurred in this circumstance. That is what we need. 
So your voice is really important, not just by turning up today, but by letting your representatives know across the country, particularly the independents, that they need to support our disallowance motions when they come into the parliament. Because that's what's going to make it so much easier for us to put into place a sensible solution. A sensible solution for the environment and a sensible solution for commercial and recreational fishing industries. It is really quite important that that occurs. Not this, Rex was quite right when he talked about that warm and fuzzy feeling about locking a few areas up and how effective it might or might not be. He was right on the money when he talked about that. We have so many better tools these days than just locking places away so people can't go there. You know that and I know that. It's really important that we get that message across. So if I can ask you to give us your help in the next few weeks to make sure that your elected representatives know well and truly that the message is that they should support the disallowance motions that we will put into place in the parliament in the next week or so. And then we can start doing the work that really needs to be done. Looking after our local environment, looking after our coastal estuaries, so that we can make sure that there, are, there is strong recruitment, so that there are plenty of fish around. And we can start cleaning up the areas that, start, that need cleaning up. So thanks very much for turning out this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank you.